What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out five best and five worst post Money in the Bank title reigns. Um, there's been some pretty good title reigns after an individual uh, wins Money in the Bank, and then there's been some just pointless, like absolutely. What was the point of even giving them the briefcase? The one I can instantly think of is uh nikki ash she was the superhero she ended up winning money in the bank i believe she cashed in on charlotte and i think she had the title for like two weeks or something like that it wasn't even that long it was kind of a waste of time she was like a transitional transist a zi ah, i can't even say it transition i can't even say it T -t -t today junior <laughs> a transitional champion y'all know what i meant i don't know what the fuck's wrong with me point is that shit was awful it was a waste of time another one i can think of easily is when the miz ended up winning it um and only won the he only had the title for like eight days and then lost it right to bobby lashley so what was the point i don't know but we're gonna get right into this one man sorry for my just i, I just couldn't get the word out man i'm sorry about that y'all i don't know what's going on with me i need some help <laughs> let's get right into this video 10 best this 10 worst that 10 times this because this is where it's at what's up 10 is a nice round number it's my favorite number so it makes me sad when i have to instead do two sets of five but for this list it was damn necessary because me you try and find more than five title reigns to come after a money in the bank cash in that can honestly be classified as good it is a real indictment of wwe's use of money in the bank in general because i certainly didn't have any trouble finding 10 terrible title reigns caused by <laughs> money in the bank. it is a storytelling device that demands creativity and the later we have gotten into vince mcmahon's career the less creativity could be relied upon so alas, Pratt. here is the compromise. I'm Tempest Hailing from Parts Fun Known, and these are the five best and five worst post Money in the Bank title reigns. But before we get on with our list, make sure of course that you've liked this video and given us a subscribe to help us get to our 250,000 sub goal. And make sure you check out the plethora of new shows here on Parts Fun Known, including but not limited to No Holds Bored. I, I really love that show. You, you should watch it. Number five worst, Carmella. Mm. I will let you know right now that the majority of the entries on the worst end of the spectrum are quite short. This one, however, proves that you can in fact have a long reign and it still be sh**. Luke Owen in particular <laughs> hates this title reign and I can't exactly blame him. My personal gripes with it come from all the brain dead takes I heard about Charlotte beating Asuka at WrestleMania being a good thing only for Charlotte to turn around and lose to Carmella at Backlash and then for Asuka to lose to Carmella on two straight pay-per-views rendering the Mania match pointless. Made no damn sense. While Luke's gripe is that the storyline of Carmella's reign were that they kept telling us on TV that she sucked and she's not deserving to be champion, and then she kept winning and going toe to toe with Asuka and Charlotte, making her character wildly inconsistent. Boiled his piss, he says. Mm -hmm. And all this doesn't even take into account that all those pay per view matches, you know, the ones with Charlotte and Asuka, were f dreadful. <laughs> Number five best, Edge. Yep. From one long yet unappealing title reign to a short yet eventful one, yes. Even the best reigns to come from Money in the Bank aren't guaranteed to be very long, such as the very first one. Mm -hmm. Edge cashed in Money in the Bank on John Cena at New Year's Revolution on January 8th, 2006, and lost the title back to Cena at the Royal Rumble on January 29th. On the surface, that doesn't sound very good, mm -hmm. but if you dive a little deeper, you'll recall that Edge packed a lot of memorable stuff into just three mm -hmm. weeks. I yeah. mean, how many WWE champions can say that they got all the way down in the middle of the ring? If and it, one of the things which worked is it helped it let wwe know okay he can be a top guy as a heel even though it was short lived he ended up becoming wwe champion again or whatnot he could be a top guy they even gave him like his own customized rated r superstar belt so honestly it worked for him because it let management know he can be the top heel. He still, I think, has the highest rated segment in Monday Night Raw history. <laughs> 
Might not have been the most tasteful segment, but it damn sure popped a rating. Mm -hmm. We also got a damn fine TLC match on Raw. Only the fifth TLC match WWE had ever put on as Edge beat Ric Flair to retain the title. Mm -hmm. This reign may have just been a way to tie up the loose end of Edge's briefcase before WWE got too close to the build for WrestleMania, mm -hmm. but Edge made the most of his time and made it possible for WWE to put the title on him a second time. Yep. And then nine more times after that. Yep. Number four worst, Sheamus. Sheamus in 2023 facing Walter for the Intercontinental title is by far the best Sheamus there has ever been. Facts. You look stupid, Sheamus, with the mohawk, beads in his beard, a rip-off Steve Austin shirt, and the League of Nations backing him up is maybe the worst Sheamus there has ever been. Perhaps the, let me tell you an Irish tale, fella. World Heavyweight Champion smiling Sheamus, but it's close. The end of 2015 was a bad time for WWE, the lowest point in the Roman Reigns as a top guy era, and Raw ratings were hitting new lows seemingly every mm -hmm. week with Sheamus as WWE Champion having cashed in Money in the Bank on Roman Reigns at Survivor Series. This was such a pointless decision. WWE was desperately in search of a John Cena replacement, and in their hour of need, they turned to Sheamus as the heel to pull the John Cena out of Roman Reigns, nope. of which there was none. This reign only lasted 22 days before Sheamus dropped the belt back to Reigns with precisely nothing gained but some promos about tater tots. Number four best. Uh, uh, definitely. Uh, it's a time we try to forget. <laughs> Daniel Bryan. It is fair to say that Daniel Bryan's best title reigns came before and after this one, but hey, yep. Picasso's worst painting is still a work of art. Not to say this was Bryan's worst title reign by any means. He did hold the title for a day in 2013 after all. When Daniel Bryan cashed in Money in the Bank at TLC 2011 to win his first ever World Heavyweight mm -hmm. Championship and stood on Michael Cole's desk, it was an all-time babyface moment. But with Bryan being one of the all-time greats, he turned this babyface moment and a potentially great babyface reign into a fantastic heel run instead. Mm -hmm. Using the yes chant to turn him heel organically, mm -hmm. Bryan began winning matches through more chicken sh means until he was straight up crushing the main event dreams of Santino Morella. It may have had a garbage ending, Sheamus just can't help but taint this list, yeah. but this cash-in <laughs> title reign made Bryan an undeniable main event talent in WWE, and that cannot be said about many of those who win Money in the Bank. Facts. Like, seriously, how many people who won their first world title through Money in the Bank stayed a main eventer? Edge, CM Punk, Bryan, Seth Rollins, that might be it, which makes it even more impressive for Bryan yeah. to be in a list so exclusive. Nah, that, that, definitely, that definitely catapulted him even though WWE still didn't want to make him that top guy, he became that top guy because of that heel run and because of what happened with him at WrestleMania with Sheamus. It just, it just organically happened. Those are things you just, you can't plan or predict. It just has to be at the right place at the right time. And him winning Money in the Bank definitely helped that situation. Number three worst, Nikki A.S.H. Just said you know that it. that list I just spoke of? It's not not this list that you're watching, the list within the list, hashtag listception. I think the biggest example of the inverse Said at the beginning of the video to come from a money in the bank cash in mm. might be Nikki A.S.H., which is a damn shame because Nikki seems like a lovely person and deserving of all the success in the world. As I said earlier, money in the bank is inherently a storytelling device that requires creativity. And in the absence of that, you get what we've got in the last few years, which is a lot of same day or next day cash ins and very little thought put into the reign that follows. Right. Nikki A.S.H. winning the title from Charlotte Flair only to lose the title back to Charlotte at SummerSlam and then never getting so much as a whiff of the women's title since is the peak of WWE's booking for the moment philosophy. Yep. I guess almost is the operative word in almost a superhero because a real superhero would probably have had a better reign. Number three Max. best, Bailey. Somehow WWE f***ed up the main roster run of Bailey until mm -hmm. this moment. Even the most un upable character to come out of NXT was no match for WWE's booking. Then, <laughs> and this is the popular theory, Bailey's tag team partner, Sasha Banks, walked out on WWE at WrestleMania 35, and WWE rewarded the loyal Bailey with Money in the Bank and the subsequent same day cash in and title reign that came with it. Mm -hmm. The first few months of this title reign were good stuff, with Bailey being the reliable champion that SmackDown needed. But the best bits of this reign most certainly came at the end when Bailey finally turned heel. Yep. She attacked Becky Lynch on Raw, then ramped up the heel meter 100 notches by attacking the wacky, waving, inflatable, arm flailing tube men, making that one dude's kid cry. <laughs> <laughs> Bailey lost the title to Charlotte before immediately winning it back, and granted, it was in that reign where Bailey really hit her stride in WWE, mm -hmm. but it was her cash-in that set her up for success. Yep. Number two worst, I much the agreed. Miz. 
Now, before people Santa's get on well. my ass for talking shit about the Miz's WWE Championship reign following his 2010 cash-in on Randy Orton, which I was entirely ready to talk shit about, that reign was long listed. This entry is for his 2021 mm -hmm. cash-in. The Miz waited a full decade for another chance to hold the WWE Championship, and then somehow it was even more shit than his first. <laughs> Granted, his first was not meant to be shit, and this one was, but that doesn't mean it gains any points. The shortest reigning champion to come from a Money in the Bank cash-in, The Miz cashed in on Drew McIntyre following Drew's Elimination Chamber match in 2021, thanks to some help from Bobby Lashley. In return, Lashley got a title match against Miz the following week on Raw, and I will give you 10 seconds to look at Bobby Lashley and The Miz and guess who won that match. <laughs> if you guess The Miz, I now own your house. Sorry, that was in the fine print. The Miz held the WWE title this time for only eight days, eight and even days. if it was by design, that is an objectively sh** reign for the person that is supposed to be the top champion of your company. The 2020s have not been kind to Money in the Bank so far, so instead, let's cast our minds back to Number two best, see Yeah, they just, they, they butchered that. They met, that was a waste of time. <laughs> they, so much of a waste of time. I believe they gave the money in the bank that year to Otis, which they knew they didn't have really have a plan for. Then I believe Otis lost it to Miz, and then it just, just waste of time. M Punk. Much of the time, the failings of WWE regarding Money in the Bank can be boiled down to a lack of imagination and creative storytelling. Thankfully, during the first few years of the briefcase's life, that wasn't the case. Nope. Perhaps on display best with CM Punk's 2009 cash-in on Jeff Hardy. This cash-in managed to serve as a WWE do-over for Punk's lackluster 2008 reign as World mm -hmm. Heavyweight Champion, as well as a launching pad for Punk to get higher than he had ever been in WWE to that point through careful character work and a fantastic rivalry. The idea of Punk turning on the fans because they were now booing him for cashing in on Jeff Hardy mm -hmm. rather than cheering him like they did when different he cashed edge. in on Edge the year prior, despite him doing nothing different, is such a simple yet totally effective and believable motivation to turn heel. And I'm sure it worked. It made sense because he did it. He cashed in on Edge. Everyone loved it. He cashed in on Jeff Hardy. No one loved it. But it's like, I did the same thing. I didn't do any, I didn't change. What do you expect? That's what I was supposed to do. It motivated. It made sense for him to turn heel in. Boy, he was doing some of the best heel work. Oh, man. Woo! Not WWE hasn't done it since. This reign wasn't very long, as is the case with most Money in the Bank cash-in title reigns, but Punk was able to cram a metric ton of character work into this short two-month reign. So Number good. one worst, Jack Swagger. <laughs> Jack what Swagger. more is there to say about the failed experiment that was Jack Swagger as World Heavyweight Champion? It sucked. We all know it sucked. Everyone knows it sucked. The highlight of this reign was a slightly above average pay-per-view match against Randy Orton, and I think that is the blandest use of the word highlight <laughs> there has ever been. The WrestleMania 26 Money in the Bank match had nine other people in it, and I genuinely feel comfortable saying any of those other nine people would have been a better choice. Mm -hmm. Even Shelton Benjamin, and he was released less than a month after Mania. Putting a DQ finish laden Big Show versus Jack Swagger title defense on pay-per-view is one of the most heinous bits of thievery WWE has ever put on, <laughs> and it is for this reason I am glad my family was always on vacation the weekend of WWE's May pay-per-views. This reign did irreparable damage to the big gold belt, and I do not wish to talk about it any longer, <laughs> at least until I have to do a Money in the Bank list next year. Number one best, Seth Rollins. It took WWE 10 yeah. years to finally have Mr. I'm okay with this being number one. I'm okay with this being number one. This this one is it's perfect. It's literally one of the best cash ins, and I think the only cash in at WrestleMania. It saved the main event for Mess WrestleMania 31. This is great. This is fantastic. Your money in the bank. I'm okay with this WrestleMania, being number one. And their patience was paid off with possibly the greatest cash in ever and unquestionably the best title reign to ever come out of money yep. in the bank. By far Great the longest, title reign. with Seth holding the WWE title from WrestleMania until his knee exploded at the thought of dropping the title to Roman Reigns in November. Mm -hmm. Seth also racked up the most great matches of any Mr. Money in the Bank this champion, is so good, beating bro. Dean Ambrose, Neville, and John Cena in some of the best matches of 2015. Yep. It wasn't a perfect title reign by any means. Seth still lost way more than he had any right to as the only world champion in the company at the time, but good Money in the Bank champions are hard to come by, and none even come close close to reaching the level of quality of Seth Rollins. A fantastic cash-in and good reign if only he was able to give it the finale it so rightfully mm -hmm. deserved. And that's our list. Make sure 
But his his first title reign was really really good. Like just ridiculously good. He was the perfect chicken shit heel, but for some reason could give you a great match. So many great matches out of that. Ah, oh, take me back. That was he he they did right by him. They did right by him as winning the money in the bank uh at that time. So but comment down below. Let me know who do you guys feel like had the best title reign post money in the bank cash in and the worst title reign post money in the bank cash in if it wasn't already on this list but i appreciate all love and support you guys showing on channel road to 150k and i am still young to speed of youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see you on the next one i can barely talk now what is going on peace